Okay, good morning. Uh, week two, today is Friday, and I'm going to lecture from 8.30 to 9.20, 10.30 to 11.20. How I wish this class is like 3 co 3 which we stretch three hours in one go, but that's not the case, okay? So today's agenda, we're going to do a lot on working examples. So we're going to deal with centric unsymmetrical bending, eccentric symmetrical bending, okay? and then eccentric unsymmetrical uh, bending. So whether is it uh, unsymmetrical or symmetrical is all dependent on whether the the moment is applied in one direction or two direction, right? Just to quickly recap, if the bending moment is just applied in one direction, okay, then it's always symmetrical. With two directions, it's unsymmetrical, okay? So today, we're going to start with uh, example number one. We're going to look at an uh, example of uh, centric unsymmetrical uh, bending. Okay, so I, I believe you have seen this problem before, probably solve it before, but I'm going to solve it based on what I taught you. Okay, so the lecture on bending started on last Friday. Okay, and I did not do a lot of examples. So today, no doubt there are new topics like centric, eccentric, symmetrical, eccentric, unsymmetrical, or whatever that we're going to apply here is based on the theory I taught you guys since the since Friday last week. Okay, I'm not going to teach any more new theory. Okay, maybe some derivation of concept, but I want you all to see how it's been applied. Okay, and I will recall what we. I will help you recall what did we learn in in the last uh last two or three lectures. OK, so you can see down here on this example, you have a, a, a cross section of a structure. So based on the transformation, as you can see, this is our Y direction, OK? And this is our Z direction. And we have rotation in the X direction this way, OK? So as you can see uh, from here, when we analyze, we realize that the moment, okay, the moment is applied in a Y and Z axis. Okay, so you have both um, components of MY and MZ. So when that's the case, we know, right, the formula that we're going to apply is stress X is equal to uh, MY over IYY multiplied by Z, okay, plus MZ, or in the, 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 the formula states as equal to minus MZ over IZZ multiplied by y okay so this is the formula that we're going to apply but remember from how i teach you guys okay do not worry about whether this is minus or plus in the formula first okay we're going to analyze based on our moment okay whether is it plus or minus it depends on the whether okay whether Okay, whether tensile or compression is uh, dependent on movement vector. So what do I mean by that? Okay, if you have an arrow, your moment vector is in this direction. You use your right hand rule, and then you grab, right? So you 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 tend to uh, grab this way, okay? Or, or or we do the other way. Let's 
Okay, we, if the moment vector is this way, we tend to use our right hand rule, we grab this way, right? So this is moment in the Y. The head of the moment vector will be compression. The tail of the moment vector will be tensile. So we know that this is always negative. This is always positive. That's how we're going to do it. Okay, so we're going to apply this. Okay, so don't worry too much about the formula. Whether is it plus or minus? If you cannot remember, fine. Just focus on the moment vector. So for this example, a lot of times the moment of y and moment about z, student don't make mistake at all. A lot of times, a lot of issue will come with finding what is your i y y, i z z, and mistake has been made in what is the z and what is the y. Okay, you you get confused. Okay, so I I I'll teach you method that should unconfuse you or me. Okay, so let's do the easy stuff first. Okay, so let's find. Okay, let's find M Y and M Z. Okay, let's find M Y and M Z. So based on this diagram over here, we know that we have a uh, M Y. Sorry, M Z going in this direction. So this is our MZ. And we also have a uh, uh, MY in this direction. Okay, so there is our MY. So if we were to use our right hand rule, okay, the thumb pointing, uh, following the direction of the arrow. So when you grab your hand, Okay, this is your MZ and your MY. If you grab your hand using right hand rule, there is your MY. Okay, that's the moment. So we start calculating on our MY first. Okay, so we know that this angle over here is 20 degrees. Right, so we have MY. Is going to M sine 20. So the moment is given you that. Uh, so this is 10 times 10 to the power 3. Okay. So Ki means kilo. Okay. So kilo pound inch. Okay. So this will be equal to uh, 10 times 10 to the power 3 uh, multiplied by sine 20. So this will be equal to uh, 10 to the power 3 times sine 20. It's equal to 3.42 times 10 to the power 3. How inch? So that is our MY. Then the next one, we sell our MZ. So it's M cos 20. So it's 10 times 10 to the power 3 cos 20. Okay. So this will be equal to uh, 10 to the power 3 times by cos 20. It's going to 9.397. Uh, times 10 to the power 3 pound um, inch. Okay. So we have really found find our amplitude of our moments okay then the next step is to determine okay we are going to determine iyy and izz as i said most of the students have problem knowing which is the y and which is the uh Z okay, so I'm gonna copy this diagram and we paste down here easier for us. So let's do I Y Y first. Okay, let's let's do I Y Y first. Or I in general the formula for I is equal to uh width depth cube over twelve plus by area multiply by the global centroid 
minus by the individual centroid. Okay, and then I think we have a squared down here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to find I, Y, Y. Okay, we're going to find uh, I, Y, Y first. So y y means the axis that we're gonna find the 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 second moment of area is about the y y axis. Okay. So for this case, we need to determine the centroid. For this case, it is not so as straightforward to observation. Okay, so you have to find the centroid. But before we find the centroid, okay, I'm going to help you recall what I taught you about which is the width and which is the depth. Okay, so let's 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 recall. Okay, let's recall. All right, last week, what did I teach? Okay, uh, the geometry. Parallel to axis, okay. Uh, geometry parallel to axis of uh, interest, okay, is the width. Okay. So what do I mean by that statement? So y y is the axis of interest because we're going to find i y y. So any geometry in this direction is the width. Okay. Then the, the, the next term, just to recall, uh, perpendicular geometries. Are the depth. So this direction over here, right? They are perpendicular to the axis of interest, yes or no? So this is your depth. Okay. So just follow this, you'll not get lost. Okay. Even though it's very early in the morning. Okay. <laughs> so so we're going to we're going to divide and we're going to have two sections. Okay. We're going to have uh, section one and section two. So I'm going to call this my section one. And this part is our section two. OK, and then the geometric datum I'm going to pick is at this end. This is my geometric datum and this is my uh, direction. In terms of Z. OK, so we are going to form a table. As you've seen, I form part of a table. Then we're going to have. So what I usually do, I, I, I tend to follow uh, this format is I will write down what is my width and what is my depth. And there are reasons for it, which you can see later on. OK. OK, so the width for, for section number one. OK, so three, six, eight. And the depth is two. So this is 16. OK, and for section two, the width is two. The depth is four. So this is equal to eight. OK, so I, I could write this out very easily. It's because I already know what geometry to look for when it's the width and what geometry to look for when it's the depth. It's so much easier this way. OK. Then the next one is we're going to look at our in uh, we form a table to look at our individual small z centroid. OK, so this will be two divided by two equal to one. OK, and the next one is four is equal to uh, two. Plus by four divided by two 
this is equal to uh, uh, two. No, 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 this is equal to four. What do we mean equal to two? Okay. So the individual centroid is from your datum. It's from your datum down here. Okay. So if the individual uh, centroid, if I draw the individual centroid now for section one, okay, section one, the individual centroid will be here. Section two, the individual centroid will be here. Okay. Right. So from here, I don't see any question. If you have any question, just ask me or type in. Okay. I will try to. Excuse me, Eugene. Yes. Uh, I'm a little bit confused about the Z bar. Uh, what is it calculating and uh, where did you get the formula for Z bar? So Z bar is the individual centroid. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you where it is now. Okay. So for one.